Link's Awakening is one of the greatest games of all time, but what could it be like with online multiplayer? I couldn't resist wanting to try adding a multiplayer feature to this classic style of game. So let's walk through the journey of making a Zelda fan game from scratch with JavaScript, including multiplayer. Starting with basic movement, animations, and actions, then getting to online multiplayer connectivity, both player versus player and player versus environment capabilities. I'm going to talk through the approach I use to make this kind of thing. I hope if you're trying to make something similar, this will help you out. I started with a new browser-based JavaScript project, brought in Excalibur JS, which is a really nice library for building browser games, especially ones with 2D physics. As usual, characters and elements started as just colored boxes moving around, nothing beautiful. I downloaded some Link's Awakening sprites from Spriter's resource. I arranged the sprites in some sprite sheets and got Zelda artwork moving around on the screen. I thought it'd be cool to have different character options. Of course you could be Link, but you could also play as other characters from the Game Boy games. I made a sprite sheet for each character. I also chose to recolor Link a few times, adding more detail and making it slightly more hi-fi than what a normal Game Boy Color could do. The sprite sheets per character have rows of frames in all four directions, two walking frames, two weapon usage frames, and a damage flash. They're arranged in equal sizes, and the game engine is configured to show the correct frame at the correct time, like show the walking sequence if Link is moving. Just pressing the number keys on the keyboard swap out which skin's being used. The sprite sheet layout is the same for every character, so this just switches out which image is being used. I created a couple arenas based on the tile sets of Link's Awakening. Here's the outdoor village map, Moblin's Cave, and of course one from inside a dungeon. With these backgrounds in place, suddenly the game feels way more real. Now Link could just walk around in any open area like this, but potentially go off screen in a large map, so I needed a camera system. I started with a lightweight solution that simply follows him around with a slight easing effect. Shout out to Excalibur for making this really easy to do. I wrote a custom script that is aware of the map limits, so when you get up to an edge, the camera will stop and not show anything beyond the bounds of the map. I didn't end up reaching for that classic locking room transition like in classic Zelda games, because the arenas are big single rooms. That would have been an awesome add though. Next, it was time to add some weapons. Of course, I started with the sword swing, taking the time to make it feel just right, comparing footage of the actual game with my recreation to get it pretty close. I had to create some extra sprite frames for any non-Link characters to get them to be able to convincingly swing a sword, but this wasn't that big of a lift because all the sprites are only two frames each. The bow and arrow was next, again reviewing footage to get the sprite animation right, and general velocity speed of the arrows. I didn't worry about inventory or anything like that, you basically have unlimited ammo here, you just keep pressing the shoot key and more arrows will come. I really wanted to do a hook shot and boomerang too because those are such iconic weapons from the games, but the basic weapon types I already had were enough for an MVP, so I just moved on. Those features could be added later. The characters also needed pain states. When getting hit by something or taking damage, they get knocked backwards, show a dedicated pain frame, and then start flashing to indicate they have a little invincibility grace period. I wired this up to just happen on spacebar press for development and testing purposes. But later, of course, this needs to be caused by colliding with another object, like an enemy. Finally, to wrap up the presentation, gotta have a HUD on screen and make it feel like Zelda. A JavaScript loop iterates and creates all these hearts. There's an HP variable that takes care of filling in the hearts either empty, halfway, or full. So with all those core pieces in place, the single player experience is pretty much there. We need some enemies, of course, but we'll get there later in the video. Now we're about to get into the multiplayer connectivity part. If you haven't already, please hit like if you're enjoying the video, subscribe for more videos about game development, and let's keep going. Now the single player part looks and feels pretty good, but how do we get other people in here? I've typically reached for real-time databases before for this kind of thing, but the pace and style of this game is so fast that a peer-to-peer -peer connection was a better fit. In short, peer-to-peer -peer means the individual clients are responsible for sending direct messages back and forth to each other. The end result is really fast. I shopped around for some peer-to-peer -peer solutions in Node and found Peer.js, it's really great. When joining a session, the player gets a list of all other players that are present, then individually reaches out to each one, creating a unique connection to every player. So if a player's state updates or anything else goes on in the map, they tell each other about every little thing. Getting more specific, they technically send lightweight strings back and forth. These strings have information like where the character is, what direction they're facing, and are they in pain or not. Again, the Peer.js library made this all really easy. To actually show the other players where they are based on those messages, I set up a state map to keep track of each connection and associate an actor game object to each one. Anytime an update is received from a player, a handler in the code will update that specific actor to reflect all the latest information. So now multiple players are appearing in the same room. This was all only running locally on my computer though. So I threw the Peer.js server up to a real web service host and was able to connect to this with multiple devices. So now the game was truly online. 
I even put the game up on Netlify, sent the link to some friends, and even though we're very far away geographically, our connection speeds are really good and really fast. So that was pretty reassuring. There are also some tricks in the code to compensate for maybe laggy players. You can establish a rough trajectory based on their previous updates, and then smooth over any laggy field by interpolating positions and handling any animation patterns on your own client. I used render.com for this, and it was a positive experience, but any node host would work fine as long as they allow web sockets. So I'm not so good with ports and networking and that kind of thing, so there was a lot of trial and error for me to get this working. Thankfully, render.com's discussion board and documentation pages were all pretty good. I found a lot of other people trying to make something similar work, so it didn't take too long to piece together. Now that players can see each other and walk around in the same space, here's where the game part comes in. I wired up the weapons with collision hitboxes, so now they'd put the players in the take damage state on collide whenever they overlap. Now, maybe not so surprisingly, this kind of just turned into a slash fest. Besides arrows, your only real play is to just keep slashing your enemy until they die. It was interesting for a little bit, but then honestly got kind of boring. More depth was definitely desired. Link's Awakening had tons of awesome enemies to encounter, so let's try adding one of those. I created a sprite sheet for a moblin and put him in the game as a game object, gave him similar movement, animation, and pain states as the characters. Just for memory, I tried to recreate basic moblin behavior from Link's Awakening. He roams around the map to these invisible points at random, but if he gets close enough to a player, he enters chase mode. He'll hunt the player down, and you have to fight to get him off your back. He has some health too, just a quick counter of hits, and once it reaches zero, he'll explode into this little puff. I tried to recreate the feeling of explosions in Link's Awakening here. Again, when the Moblin runs out of health, he'll be swapped in with one of these explosion instances. That's just a simple game object that acts as an effect. It plays through its animation and then disappears. Moblins can also be hit with arrows from a distance. An arrow is basically just a flying sword, so the collisions work the same. When everything was wired up, it felt pretty satisfying to knock him out. I added a button that will just spawn moblins on the fly. This is basically a tool for instant chaos. How would all these moblins stay in sync? They aren't players with their own connections, they're basically bots. How do all the bots behave the exact same way on all the different clients? In short, the Moblin's AI is controlled by the player client that created it. So if that client's Moblin changes, it will ping everybody else with the latest information about that Moblin. Just like how the other representations of players work, the Moblins will update themselves on all clients, and then everybody sees the same thing. Now the game was way more fun because all the players could flood the room with enemies and take them all out in a co-op style gameplay. Now that the game was super fun to play, I immediately wanted to add more features. There are tons of opportunities for more weapons, enemies, game modes, matchmaking, the list goes on and on and on. And who knows, maybe that'll come in the future. Now there are definitely some concerns to be ironed out for a real production game, of course. For one thing, players might randomly get disconnected and may need to rejoin in a similar state as they were when they left. That would need some graceful handling. Enemies controlled by disconnected player clients might get weird too because their creator player is suddenly gone. There's also no real protection against cheating in this prototype either. You could modify your client code to be able to move more quickly or cause more damage. Now there are solutions to all of these problems, but just know that this demo only scratches the surface of quickly making a fun multiplayer game. And it's worth noting, I was able to get all this working on the free plan of render.com. The free plan is really generous. It does come with some inactivity timeouts though. So if your server doesn't have any activity going on, and I think it's five minutes, your service will shut down. That's just something to be aware of. There are multiple times where my service stopped working. I thought I had broke it, but it just spun down from inactivity. But of course, for a production game, you're gonna need budget for servers. There are a bunch of other tools and services on the market too to make this even easier and new innovations happening all the time. There's really never been a better time to get into this kind of development, especially for JavaScript. If there's one thing I regret not taking the time to add to this, it's the rock's feather. That item is definitely something very signature from Link's Awakening. It enabled a lot of jumping puzzles and these funny flying heart pickups. That kind of feature could enable interesting mechanics in a game like this. Maybe a temporary ability to have it and be able to cross gaps. That could be kind of clutch in a capture the flag style mode or something. If anybody takes this and runs with it, you should add that. Definitely that and the hook shot would be top of my list to do next. Let me know in the comments below if there's a multiplayer game you've been wanting to make. Hopefully some of the things we talked about here will help you get started. The last step for me was swapping out the assets to not be Zelda artwork. That way I could actually keep building on the prototype and eventually distribute this as a real game. The code for all of this is linked below if you want to check it out. I also created a full tutorial series on my course website where we build this game from scratch. If you want to go way more in depth on how everything works in this demo I showed here, there's a link to that below. If you want to get into video game development or you're already working on a game, you should join our Discord community. It's a great supportive place to hang out while you're working on your games. The link to that is below too. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and subscribing. I'll catch you next time.